So finally gonna make this video and uh, you probably know what's coming. I switched to the RED system. Let's talk about it. So RED's just one of those camera systems that a lot of people in the industry hold quite high value. It's pretty much the same like Ari, you know, and uh, Sony Venice systems. Uh, a lot of people hold real high value to that uh, for very good reason. They are incredible cameras that spit out incredible looking images. Oh, and obviously that Burano that literally just dropped, oh my God, that thing is incredible. Electronic VND with IBIS, internal RAW, amazing but we're not going to be talking about that in this video but it kind of relates but kind of not because red have bridged that gap between the low end and the high end and really created something that was really affordable in that sort of mid-range so they've got the v raptor series which kind of is that high mid-range and then the red komodo series which is you know bridging on to almost near that v raptor range and i want to explain the reasons why i ended up switching over to the red komodo x from my FX6. And uh, we'll be talking to my friend Charlie later on in this video about why he has chosen red with the red V Raptor and the red Komodo and the Komodo X um, because he is an incredible cinematographer. He's got so much experience uh, in the professional commercial industry. Uh, so it's really cool to you know hear his words about it. But I just wanna show what I've done for the past four weeks of owning the red Komodo. I don't wanna give a full review about it because I personally haven't had enough experience with this particular camera itself and the system. I know the Sony system inside out, so when a brand new camera comes, I can do a review about it easy because I know literally every single thing about those cameras and the cameras before it. So this is just my overview, my experience moving over to the RED system and just a whole bunch of things that I've learned in the past four weeks. I made it sound like I'm completely switching over systems. Now, I'm still staying with Sony, so I've still got the FX6 and I've still got my Sony Alpha cameras and all my G Master lenses and Sony lenses. I'm just utilizing the Red Komodo X for more higher end work, my uh, creative work, and just something different in my toolkit. And also just a little bit of context as well, when it comes to all this kind of cameras and filmmaking, I've only literally just graduated university two years ago. So I am still relatively fresh in my filmmaking career. So I've got so much more. My ceiling is crazy high that I want to reach. And I'm just grinding every single day, like obviously we all are, to be better filmmakers. And this is one tool that's going to help me become a better filmmaker. But I mean, if Sony literally knock on my door with that Burano for a good price without selling my kidney, I will be in talks. But until then, the KX is definitely here to stay. So in the past four weeks, I've done about, what, maybe six to eight sort of video shoots, and uh, it's been incredible. I've had such amazing fun with this camera, mainly for the fact that it literally is just another tool for me to use, and I know how to light, I know how to direct, I know how to do sound, uh, cinematography, lighting, everything, and it's literally just another sensor that I'm using, and it's pretty much relatively the same. You can sort of slot it directly into your current workflow. Uh, but there are a few different things that I obviously had to change because it's a completely different mount to start off with. It's an RF mount, uh, but I did end up getting the PL adapter, but I've only got, you know, two, three PL lenses um, and I've got so many Sony E-mount lenses. So that's been really difficult to adjust to because I am limited to what kind of lenses I can actually utilize with this system. But the biggest thing that drew me to the RED system in terms of this model, the KX, is the R3D RAW. Like it is incredible, 16-bit uh, RAW internally into the camera. You have the ability to control that white balance and uh, obviously ISO as well in post. And it's just been absolutely amazing. ISO doesn't really worry me too much. It's mainly that white balance because there are some situations I'm in and I haven't been able to, you know, get the white balance perfectly on set and the ability to change it in post and it actually being accurate and getting accurate colors, but 10 bit to 16 bit, it actually does make a difference. And the colors that you can get out of this thing is just absolutely phenomenal. But there is that difference between going from full frame 16 by nine to super 35. Like there is a bit of a difference when it comes to depth of field, when it comes to low light, 
much of a muchness there. It really depends on sensor to sensor, but the KX sensor is incredible when it comes to low lights and the kind of noise that you get out of the sensor almost feels more organic in a way because it's raw data coming straight off the sensor. There's no noise suppression and it does make a big difference. Now, one thing that I have missed with the FX6 in comparison to the Red Komodo X is that VND. Like the, v <laughs> the electronic VND inside the FX6 is just, it makes things so much easier. You only have to focus on literally putting a lens on if you wanted to and that's it. You didn't have to screw anything on. Even though I love using matte boxes because I use mist filters, uh, the four by 5.65 panel mist filters, I love using them. Um, so I pretty much use them all the time, but now I have to revert back to the Tilter Mirage matte box system where you know I've got a VND in that, plus the Pro Mist on top of that as well. I know it's a massive investment, but at the end of the day, it is exactly that. It's an investment into your filmmaking, into your business. And as filmmakers, we own a business and we need to run it as a business. And I know the Komodo X in the future will pay itself off. So that is no issues for me to invest in my business and my filmmaking. So now we're going to have a chat to Charlie Anderson about his take on the RED system. Hey, how's it going? I'm Charlie. I've been a filmmaker for the last 15 years, since 2007. And I worked on some pretty big shows, such as The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, The uh, Z, The Beginning of Everything, Good Cop, uh, HBO's Vinyl, which is this behind me right here, if you can see that. And uh, yeah, so I've done some pretty big uh, pretty big shows. So I've worked pretty closely with Reed Morano for her early career, up until she went and did Handmaid's Tale. And I've been most recently just been a uh, cinematographer for the most part for the last uh, four or five years, although I've been shooting since 2007 as well. So I kind of like did both DIT work and cinematography work, kind of a jack of all trades kind of person. Personally for me, why do I, why did I want to own a Komodo? Technically you have three Komodos. So I have, this is a Komodo. I have this, which is my usual shooting Komodo. And I have the new uh, Komodo X as well, which is this guy right here. So a lot of the work that I do is made for social media, is made for like YouTube content, that sort of stuff, where it doesn't make sense to have big cameras and big budgets for like a, an Alexa, Sony Venice, uh, even a, a V Raptor XL, which I also own, um, to do those sorts of shoots and jobs and whatnot. So a lot of a lot of jobs are just you know very quick, easy, dirty. You got to kind of just go in and get things done. Um, there's not a huge budget for things for camera, so. You could spend all your budget on an Alexa 35 if you really wanted to, or you can get a, you know, um, you can have a Komodo X or a Komodo, and you can spend a little bit more money on better glass maybe, or some other accessories, or have two cameras if you need to shoot two cameras for about the same price as you could probably get for one, depending on what you're doing. And that's just the body. It's not including any accessories, wireless video, wireless follow focus, sticks, lenses, map box, filters, batteries, etc., monitors, you know, the whole nine yards. Uh, so I, I really like this guy, uh, mainly from a perspective of it's small, it's very versatile. Um, I love the global shutter on it, although I don't really use the global shutter that often. I don't do a bunch of volumetric work, which is where it really shines. You really want that if you can. Uh, but the nice thing I like about it is I use this a lot for music videos. I shoot a lot of gimbal work, which is great because you can put that on a, you know, a, a Z crane or a Ronin 2 or 3 or whatever they're up to at this point. I had the original Ronin, which I would do a bunch of work on. Or you can put them on some of the smaller, like, handheld gimbals, which is great. Uh, the Komodo itself originally was really great because uh, even though it could only do 6K40, uh, everything I would shoot was be ma would be mastered at 4K anyway for YouTube, Vimeo, etc. So uh, I would typically just shoot at 5K48 for all my music video stuff and just Canon lenses... Uh, whatnot. I've done a few music videos with the autofocus uh, for the Canon glass. The Komodo, original Komodo, the the, the autofocus wasn't very good because it was still beta. I would have to say that the, the autofocus on this guy, the Komodo X, is excellent. So one of the reasons that I really like the Red Kodak is you still get the ability to do um, like compressed RAW without having to have huge file sizes. So. Um, R3DLQ is uh, essentially what I like to shoot in for most of my stuff because I get the most, the best 
middle ground, I'll say. So if I'm shooting some high quality stuff, like some VFX heavy or needs a lot of, um, uh, needs more compression, or I know I'm gonna do a heavy color grade on it later, I'll shoot MQ. I typically don't shoot HQ. Uh, I just don't see, I don't know that the extra data rate is worth it for what I'm trying to do. Because a lot of the stuff that I'm shooting is like long interview content, lots of multi-camera work. Um, and essentially I want to be able to hand uh, drives off to the client at the end of the day. So that all comes into play when you're talking about hard drives, hard drive space, transfer speed, etc. So um, I just like the red uh, red codec for the versatility of it. The funny thing about this is uh, I get asked a lot of questions about like, isn't red hard to work with? Well, it used to be hard to work with. And I still think a lot of that stigma is left over from those days. So the funny thing is when you had a um, the pre DSMC two stuff, which DSMC stands for uh, digital stills, motion capture or motion camera. I think it's motion camera. I don't know. Um, you actually needed a piece of hardware to decode it. So nowadays you can do, um, decoding of the red code raw, uh, with just your GPU pretty easily premiere after effects, red, uh, final cut. You can do all of it pretty easily, um, with, current modern day computers. However, back in the day of the Red One days, you would need one of these. So uh, I actually found this in my basement. I forgot that I still had this. So what this is, is this is a Red Rocket. And what that was is this is just an accelerated GPU and you would need this to do any sort of rendering um, to get any sort of speeds to render. Because normally in the past you would have to use uh, a lot of CPU power. And so you would normally get like if you're shooting 8K raw, red raw, or even, I can't remember what the red one used to shoot. It might have just been 4K raw. Um, anyway, if you're shooting red back in the day, you used to need one, you used to need one of these because um, otherwise you're getting like four to six frames a second when you're rendering. And if you have an hour long video, you're, a one hour video um, or interview or whatever, it's gonna take you like four or five hours to render. Whereas this would accelerate it to uh, near time render for full res, full debayer, like essentially real time rendering, or you could do like half res good or something like that for um, like to speed up if you're doing dailies and trying to get things out. So um, you would typically have more, you know, multiple of these if you need to have renters, but that was mainly for the big, um, the big post houses that were doing colors and daily and all that fun stuff. So, um, so it used to be tough. And I think that stigma is still stuck around a little bit. But nowadays it's super easy. Like it's like, what do they shoot now? What are we? I don't even know what's in this thing now. Um, yeah, they're just. This is just a CFE card. This is just a CFE Express card, um, and it's just super easy. Most things can download, uh, decode it, and play back super fast and easy. So the workflow really hasn't changed much, um, in terms of a DIT perspective. Um, they really kind of got it right with these new DSMC three bodies, even though that's not what they're calling it. But that's kind of like we all what we all call it where they just have like, you know, the log 3G10 and red wide gamut. It's just, it, it just looks great. So didn't used to be, used to be very confusing on how to do like IPP2 was a big thing when that first came out with the DSMC2 bodies, which is like the red Epic, the Epic X or Epic W um, and the, um, those are the dragon sensors, I think, something like that. I can't remember, but um, Anyway, it used to be super confusing and you have to really know what you're doing and have to really pay attention. Whereas like back then when the Alexa first one came, when the first Alexa came out, it was like plug and play. You shoot log, you put a LUT on it afterwards, you're good. And it shot ProRes. So there was no raw capabilities. Was, everything was baked in, but everyone was fine with it baked in. You shot ProRes four by four um, and you're good. So, and the other thing that's really important to me, may not be important to you, but it's important to me for whatever it is that I do because I have a lot of fast turnarounds, is this has camera to cloud built into it, which is just like, I can shoot on this. I'm doing, I'm using camera to cloud right now to shoot this video for Jason. So in this Komodo, it's just built in through the Wi-Fi. As soon as, as, soon as I hit cut, these are gonna go to my Frame.io account. Um, and same with my sound recorder. My sound recorder is gonna cut, that's gonna go to my Frame.io account and that's just there for my editor to use forever. So like, I actually don't have to like ever download this footage. It's going to live on the cards and it's going to go to Jason and he can download it and use it whenever he wants. All right. So uh, a question I get asked a lot is why Aerie? So um, for the most part, like I have, I own an Alexa 35. 
um, but for not the reasons why you think. The reason why I have an Alexa 35 and a Mini LF is mainly for consignment reasons. And so what that means is just I purchase the camera and I have relationships with um, vendors in which those cameras will then just stay at those certain um, either rental shops or boutique rental houses or whatever it ends up being. And that is my, um, my way of just like paying for the camera by owning it and it just sits somewhere. So that's very unique for my situation. And that's mainly so that way um, I can help pay for the camera. So uh, I am able to take it out every now and then, but for the most part, um, I don't. Yeah, so in reality, it just comes down to what do you need? What are your clients are asking for? What's the what's this type of quality you wanna to bring to the table? So um, I mean, you can get pretty good cinema, cinema quality with this guy or a Komodo, or a Komodo X, whatever you're using. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, at CharlieTheDP, and um, yeah, you can follow my fun journey. I just do a lot of like commercials for Instagram, YouTube, etc. so um, yeah, it's fun, I like it. There's no writing on it, but that helps, all right, okay.